Today, we're gonna to be going through a brand new bag I just received, the Climb Knack Pack. Stick around. Hey, this is Chad with Be Gone For Good. We do videos all about adventure motorcycling from the bikes we ride, the trips we take, tips, tricks, tutorials, everything under the sun when it comes to adventure motorcycling. You're gonna find it on this channel. If you like that sort of thing, definitely subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications every time we upload a new video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about this new bag I just received from Climb, uh, the Knack Pack. This is a smaller bag. It's not something necessarily you'd wanna put like, you know, many, a full weekend worth of stuff in. It's just kind of the thing that you can have on your back for riding. If you wanna have some tools, some water, a little bit of snacks, kind of a light backpack that you can take with you. There's a couple of other companies out there doing similar, smaller backpacks just to like throw on your back real quick and easy and, and jet off. You probably don't even need like a tail bag or a tank bag if you're carrying something like this on a shorter day trip, something along those lines. That's what this pack is for. But we're gonna go through the things I love about it. I've been using it for about a month now and some of the, the parts of this that distinguish it from other packs that are out there. I wanna jump in here really quickly and let you know that although I got this pack from Climb to review, they didn't tell me what I had to say, any positives, no like highlight list or anything like that. This is my honest review. Uh, unadulterated, you're gonna get the good, the bad, and the ugly about this pack and other packs that I'm gonna be reviewing as well. But it is important that you know that I did get this pack sent to me by Climb to review specifically. It's not something I got out of my own pocket, but they sent it out to me. This is my review. Let's continue. First off, uh, one of the things you're gonna notice about this is the harness system. And it's, it's strange, I'm not even talking about storage, we're not talking about the front of it, any of the uh, bells and whistles that come, just the way that this secures to your body. Uh, it's not, straight straps that come over the top like every other backpack with a, that clip that's in the middle. Uh, they actually kind of angle in to what looks almost like chest armor. So they come to the, to the front here. These are really nicely padded. They've got a lot of airflow in there or kind of area to let air roll through there. Uh, then from there, you also have this single-handed clip here that's really nice and it rotates as well but you can pop out of it with just one hand. You don't need two hands to buckle. Um, it just, it's a, it's a super great buckle on here that I'm really surprised I liked as much as I did. It uh, holds on here so nicely that a lot of the weight of the bag kind of spreads across your chest rather than over top of your shoulders, which can be massive when you're talking about a, a 10 hour ride, especially if you've got any weight in there. If you're carrying, you know, a half gallon to a gallon of water, that's gonna start weighing on your shoulders if you're bouncing around and riding outside of the, uh, on top of the pegs. But this spreads it kind of across the chest. It feels almost like you've wrapped the bag around you rather than over your shoulders, but obviously it sits like a normal backpack. I think it's all because of the way that this is formed. You've got a lot of capability of adjusting um, on the shoulders and then obviously across the front um, as far as how high these sit on your on your chest or across your armor or anything like that. Uh, it's a really, this to me is what distinguishes this bag from, from any of the others that I've been in. And I'm, I'm a big fan of how this locks on the front and, and how it secures overall on your body. Uh, obviously there's uh, extensions on the bottom that you can also adjust how it fits around the, the side, kind of where your, your kidneys are. In the back also is this really nice foam padding. It's got a line down the middle for like kind of your spine so it's not riding directly on the bone there. Uh, but it's it's really nice and, and you don't feel hot in it, I think is another thing. Like with this sitting on your back, even if you've got a bladder on the inside, it doesn't feel uh, like it's it's weighing on you. It's again, it feels almost like a jacket you've wrapped around yourself instead of something that's over your shoulder and bouncing on that, on that side. Uh, each one of these has a little pocket up here. Now, as phones have gotten outrageously big, this doesn't fit a phone anymore. Probably could fit like a snack bar, something like that. I don't even know that you could fit like a Garmin in here. Uh, it's just kind of small pockets. So change would be awesome if you're going on tolls. I know that when we did our route down to Honduras, we went, through a lot of tolls and being able to like, having to dig through your tank bag for it or in your pockets of your jacket was really kind of a mess. This would have been awesome to have just a real reach in where you can grab a couple of bucks out and, and pay your toll. Super simple, massive pulls on here that you can operate with, um, with gloves without any issue. 
There's a little uh, kind of flexible case up here. It's really tiny. I don't, I don't even know what would be, what would be good in here, but there it is. On the opposite side, you got the same sort of zipper pull, same sort of pocket. Super small, but I'm sure you can use it for something. On this specific zipper pull, you've got a whistle. If you need an emergency whistle for some reason, I think that feels um, kind of ridiculous, but there it is. If you're gonna have a zipper pull, you might as well have it be a whistle. Um, but that's one. Flipping around to the front of the bag. Uh, this handle, I really like and I don't know why. It's uh, just a normal kind of nylon handle, but it's been covered in kind of a hard uh, plastic um, that's, it's flexible still, but it's, it's covered that nylon. Uh, it doesn't appear to be reflective, but it is just a nice, it's just a nice feel. Um, I like it more than if they had left that just a nylon strap. I'm sure with this hard plastic coating on it, um, that again is so flexible, so it's not hard, but it's, it's solid, uh, is this will protect the nylon quite a bit, right? Like you won't, uh, you won't run through that nylon nearly as quickly as if it didn't have that coating on it. Uh, the next thing that I really like about this bag is this hard upper portion here. Uh, again, it's not solid, um, like you could crush it. So it's pretty sturdy, but it's not, it's not like a rock, right? So you don't have to worry about uh, this dinging, dinging off of um, you know, walls or your bike or anything like that. It's still soft enough to, have, um, to not be an impact point, but, but anyway. It's there. It's a hard case that you can put, um, I think it's for your goggles. It maybe feels a little small for that, but uh, you can fit glasses in here. I put my sunglasses in here. You can put your wallet, anything like that that you need uh, quick access to. It flips down really nicely as well. So if you needed to, you could use it kind of as a little tray if um, you had anything you were doing. For instance, uh, when I'm out on the road and putting on my contacts, I'm routinely looking for a flat surface on the bike. With it tilted over on the kickstand, everything sort of slides off of it. This would be something I could sit down, open this, put my contacts right here, and work on this little space right here. Um, I kind of like that idea. Uh, it comes with a massive uh, microfiber cloth that's bungeed into the pocket. So that's kind of nice. Uh, and then it's got a small felt pocket in here as well. If you're carrying like a secondary lens or something like that, it can all it can all fit in here. It's all really nicely felt lined. So this is the place where I would store anything that kind of matters. Even if your phone, your phone probably fit really nicely in here. Uh, so you don't have to carry it in your pockets or anything like that. It can fit right here in this, um, this larger compartment. And again, it's sturdy enough that I wouldn't worry about anything crushing my glasses, my sunglasses, my goggles, my phone um, in here. Even if you're jamming stuff on top of it, that's, that's super solid. Uh, the next pocket is this really small one up here in the front. It looks kind of like an admin pocket. So there's little, there's little spaces for um, pens and pencils. There's like a pocket here that you could probably fit a Garmin in, though you wouldn't be able to get the antenna out for anything, but it's kind of that size. Uh, behind it, you could fit a notepad, maybe an iPad would fit in there. And then there's this little Velcro pocket over here. Again, I don't, I don't really know what you put in there, but it's, it's available to you. So it's just an admin pocket broadly. Uh, it's big enough that I think if I wanted to stuff a uh, puffy in there, I could probably do it. Could definitely fit uh, rain gear in there. Like the frog togs would fit in there really nicely. Uh, anything beyond that that's like a little bit more robust might struggle to fit into that pocket. Uh, but it, it, it's a nice pocket to have. That would be where I'd probably put like snacks, anything that I need for my day. My journal would probably go in there uh, so that I can mark off real quickly what shots I took and where we went and names of different restaurants or whatever would go in that pocket. It's nice and easy to access. The next thing that I really like about this bag is that that front pocket is actually a part of an attachment that turns this whole front into kind of an exterior beaver tail. So if you do have wet gear, rain gear, something like that, you can stick it in this front portion, your rain fly even. Might be a little big, but you could probably do it. Stick that in here and cinch up these outside clips. And that is still outside your bag. So anything that's inside your bag, if you do have an iPad in there, if you do have your computer or anything that you don't necessarily wanna get wet, that pocket is still on the outside of the bag. So you're holding it in there, you can hold it, you can put a, your, uh, your rain jacket, you could put your rain fly, you could put any sort of gear that you want to keep kind of on the outside. Your chonies, 
that didn't quite dry off in the evening, you can stick them on this outside pocket and still keep them out of the main compartment or out of this front compartment, which I think is just, just awesome. That's gonna be really, really helpful. Um, there's another pocket back here. Oh, look at that. I was wrong. This is how, this is how much I haven't used this bag for everything. That, that pocket, that bag actually comes out of here and this is your tool kit. Holy cow, that's awesome. So it's a little tool kit that you can put in there, completely detaches. Uh, it's got these little loops on the front that the clips go into to hold it there, um, or you can just remove it altogether. But on the inside, it's got room for, it's got some bungees for your screwdrivers, your wrenches, anything that you can put in there. It's got a zippered portion here for any of your Allen keys or uh, if you've got smaller items that wanna stick in there, that would work really well. Um, and behind it, a lot more bungees. Wow, that's really, <laughs> that's a really great little toolkit. Again, for daily rides, I don't know that this would be enough if I was doing kind of a around the world type of thing or a long-term travel, you know, a few weeks at a time. But for a short day trip, more than enough. This is perfect. That's fantastic. It's got a little tools marker on there too to so you know exactly what it's for. I should have realized. Uh, so you can clip that in right there. Oh, that's fantastic. I really am a big fan of that. And then that also allows you that whole front compartment as well. That's great. That's fantastic. Okay, let me look at the main pocket now. So the main pocket uh, includes your area where you can hang a hydration. It's got a little hydration loop there and a pocket that you can book your bag in. Now, Climb sells this without the hydration pouch included. Uh, it's an extra 40 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that. You could throw a different hydration pouch. We all have at least one from, uh, whether it's a Camelback or a previous one that we've had from some other company. Like You could find any hydration pouch and stick it in here. It doesn't have to be the Climb one, but they make room for it and, and build a, an area specifically for that. Uh, the tube then would run out. I don't know where the tube would come out. Okay, we'll have to find the tube spot, but I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Um, then you've got the uh, the interior pouch. Now, this is where this bag really uh, really set itself apart for me. Uh, I'll have other bags that I'm reviewing, but a lot of times when I'm commuting. I need to be able to fit essentially kind of like a legal pad sized um, stuff into the main compartment. And whether that's a pair of shoes to go to the gym with a sweatshirt or actual like a binder of sorts, you know, like a regular, you know, eight and a half by 11 type of binder. I need to be able to fit that in this bag so I can throw it on my back, get on the bike and go. Some of the bags are built so thin and to stay kind of just pressed up against your back so well that they don't fit the larger items that I need on my commute or the things that I typically am carrying with me. This bag does fit those things. If I need to put a pair of shoes in here and a sweatshirt to be able to go to the gym, easy to do on this in this bag because it's, it's built kind of a big rectangle. So it's a large rectangle that sits up on top of your bag. It doesn't curve in on you, which is nice for some things, doesn't work really well for a lot of the things that I'm doing day to day. So I'm a big fan of how large this compartment is and the type of things that you can fit in it. It's really easy to pack into and pull things out of. You don't have to worry about catching on uh, any of the items on the inside, but it's really nice on that front. Now for the construction, uh, what this is made out of, it's better than a standard just street backpack. Um, it's definitely more rugged than that but it's not as rugged as some others. Uh, it's not the really heavy kind of, if you've ever felt a, like an army sea bag, that type of nylon, that super, super heavy, like Cordura type of stuff, it's not that. So if you were to have a pretty extreme get off, you may punch a hole in this. Uh, it's, it's got a lot of protection in different areas and, and there's so many different parts of it that even if you damaged one, you wouldn't damage the entire bag. Uh, but it's not, it's definitely not the toughest material I've run across in a bag. There'll be further reviews of, of bags like that. Uh, there's exterior uh, kind of areas to put what seems to be kind of a, a Garmin pocket 
on here or uh, maybe something a little bit kind of like a, a larger pole. You can put your telescoping poles in there or a tripod, um, something like that. I know this front pack, this front area uh, would easily fit any of your gas bottles and still keep them kind of outside the bag, which I think is also good. Uh, there is a kind of a flexi one over here if you wanted to throw a drink in there, something like that, like a little bottle. It's all, it's all very nicely constructed um, and has a lot, of, uh, a lot of capability. There's a lot of flexibility built into this bag to kind of tailor it for what you need. Uh, and I'm a big fan. And the colorways that they have available, this is the gray. They have an olive, which goes really well with any of the kind of tans or flat dark earth type of color set schemes that you see from Climb. Anything that has kind of a natural feel uh, looks kind of like camouflage, the olive would go for. There's also kind of an orangey red highlights on it as well, so it's not just a drab bag. They make a black, they make a pink, and I think that might be it. There might be one other one out there that's not, I think, my taste, but uh, this is the gray. The gray looks really great. There are some uh, reflective panels right here, so even if you have this on your back and like you've covered up all the reflection that you would have on your on your jacket or your armor, you'll still get some reflection off the bag itself. Um, but it's really, it's, a, it's great. All of the zipper pulls have these really nice um, uh, tabs on them so that you can operate them in gloves without any issue. It's not just zippers, they all have uh, pulls on them. It all cinches down really well too with these little, these little clips so that if you do need to tighten the load onto your back so it's not flapping around or bouncing on you, uh, you can do that as well. This is a phenomenal piece to be able to take on daily rides. So we had talked about maybe going back out to Lockhart in Moab for Utah, and we were talking about doing it slick, so kind of stripping all the stuff off our bike. If you want to watch a video right up here of us taking a trip through Moab the wrong way, uh, completely overloaded, packed to the gills with all the wrong stuff, not enough water. Uh, if we went back, it would be with something like this, and I would jam it full of water as well. Um, ah, there you go. So the hydration tube comes right up and out of this section here. There's a little hole that leads all the way down into the main compartment. So you can run that tube up seemingly yep, on either side. So whether it's on your right or your left, it can come right up there and have a nice streamlined along the straps um, spot for your, your tube. Anyway. If we went back to Lockhart, this would be probably what I put on. I'd put a, um, a rain jacket, something probably a little bit heavier in case we got stuck out in the cold in there. I would have a tent sitting behind me, uh, probably strapped to the seat. I would have a bunch of food and water in here along with uh, probably a couple of gallons of water in uh, my saddlebags. And that's about it. That's, I'd go as slick as I possibly could and this would be with me uh, on my back or maybe even strapped to the bike if I really wanted to get ambitious with my riding. But the great thing about it is because this straps down so nicely around you, it doesn't feel like you're wearing a backpack. Even when you have weight on, it still is really comfortable. Um, and if it's comfortable, you're more likely to wear it more often. So that to me was one of the biggest, I guess, benefits to going with bags like this uh, once they start being comfortable is that I was like, okay, now that I've felt it on me and I'm okay with it, I'll wear it all the time. Um, but my worry was that if it felt like what a normal backpack does, I've been riding around with a 5.11 backpack on my back for two years now, and you feel every moment of it. It's not something I'm particularly happy about wearing. I do it just merely out of convenience, so I can jump off the bike and go into the office, or I can jump off the bike and go into the store I need to, into the gym, whatever. But it's not something I would ever want to travel long term with, because you can feel every ounce of weight that's on your back. This, not so much. This is set up to ride in and it's uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. Full disclosure, Climb sent this out to me to review, to talk about, and uh, I was really uh, a little bit nervous about it because I've ridden with other bags before and haven't loved them. I've ridden with uh, some bags currently that I do like quite a bit and I didn't think this would surpass them. Um, it has, it has done a great job of doing so many of the things that I wanted to do, I'd say that this gets me about 95% of the way to where I wanna be when it comes to a backpack on the bike. Uh, the only thing that I would think that could be better 
is maybe slightly tougher fabric, but even that, I, I don't even know why, because this is more than tough enough to deal with your, uh, your standard wear and tear. The only thing that this is gonna succumb to may be a road slide. And if you're sliding on the road, you've got bigger issues than whether or not you have to replace a backpack. So um, outside of that, it's, it's probably a lot lighter because it's not that heavy material. So I don't even know that that's a, that's a bad thing. It's just not as tough as some of the other bags that are out there. So maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, I don't know. But that is what it is. Um, and that's the only real nitpick I could even offer for this bag so far. Uh, I've been a big fan of it so far. It's, um, it's done everything that I've asked it to do and then quite a bit more. Uh, and some of the features on here, you'll learn to really love as you use them more and more. So this, uh, this opening in the front, the, the clip, the, the, the harness that it comes on, I, I love it, I love it. <laughs> Climb knocked it out of the park. I did not think I would be a motorcycle backpack type of guy. This, this bag has made me that, uh, a motorcycle backpack type of guy. So uh, thank you very much, Climb. I appreciate you sending this out to me. I appreciate uh, having a chance to review it. I will uh, absolutely be wearing this a lot more. I will give you further reviews as I spend more time in it. If I see anything that doesn't feel awesome, I'll let you know. I don't see that happening anytime soon, but uh, if it does, you'll, you'll hear about it. That's everything I have for the Climb Knack Pack. If you have any questions for me, if you ride with this bag and have uh, any concerns or things that you've seen or found out about it that I didn't list, definitely leave a comment down below. If you're looking at this bag or any others, also leave a comment down below. I'll get you any answers you possibly, uh, you possibly may need. Thank you very much for watching. This is Chad with Be Gone For Good. Again, we do videos all about adventure motorcycling. We'll be talking a lot about gear in the coming months. I wanna thank you again for watching. Remember, the adventure starts with you, up here and in here. I'll see you in the next one.